Hey there, real quick before I start the video, I just want to let you know this is going to be the most in-depth sewing machine review on the internet. All right, so you need to strap in and get ready because there's going to be a lot of information. In fact, so much information that I had to make it into two videos because it was getting too long. So this is going to be part one of the two-part series. The next part's going to be next week. So here comes the most in-depth sewing machine review on the internet of this Juki sewing machine. I hope you enjoy. In my last video, I said that this was going to be the most in-depth sewing machine review on the internet. Well, let me just show you my setup. Here's the sewing machine from the last video. We did an unboxing of the Juki HZL27Z sewing machine. And I said that this is going to be a much more in-depth review than you're used to. What we have here is an XTEC power analyzer data logger. What this allows us to do is to capture the wattage, power factor, volt amps, voltage, frequency, and current in amps of this sewing machine and see what kind of power readings we get while this sewing machine is operating through different materials. That's just one of the things that we're testing in today's video. So stick around. We're starting with the sewing machine review. We want to look and see what kind of sewing machine we have. So in this case, if you look and you're watching the hook as it's rotating around, notice how the hook keeps going in the same direction as I'm turning the dial. So since it's going in the same direction the entire time, it's not an oscillating hook, it's actually a rotating hook sewing machine. So this rotating hook, uh, what this does for you is it, it makes a smoother operating machine when that happens because you're not switching directions and having mass inside the machine oscillating back and forth. So that's a good thing. Uh, I believe what I've seen, uh, one of the drawbacks of having a rotating hook sewing machine is that sometimes your bobbin thread ends up getting twisted over time if you're sewing for a long period of time without removing the thread or the material. I don't know, uh, you know, you can comment below, let me know whether or not you've seen that before in this type of sewing machine. But what we have in this case is a rotating hook. The uh, type of bobbin, because this bobbin is flat on the sides, and it's a relatively thick bobbin, this is a class 15 bobbin. Very standard type bobbin for a lot of machines. Now that we have the machine threaded, we're going to grab our TOA bobbin case tension gauge and we're going to use it for the upper thread. In this case, the machine is threaded. I've got the presser foot down. I've got my thread tension set on the medium setting, which is five for this one. And I notice that I can feel a lot of tension on this thread. That's what I should feel. It's, it's threaded all the way through to that needle. And we're just checking to see what the machine is set at at the factory for your mid-range upper thread tension. This is a digital TOA meter. There's an analog one available as well. So you just thread it around like this. And then you hold the machine steady while you pull the thread. And you want it to be basically a straight shot to that needle. So I got about 320 on that one. Yep, I'd say we're about 320 grams. And then the lower thread, we're going through the presser foot. I don't want the presser foot to pinch this at all. We're going to do the same thing. It 
So I saw about 55 there. 52. You always want to take about five readings and then average those readings together to get your readings. So that is the factory setting on this machine. I like to do that for a new machine because a lot of times it's difficult to get a service manual for these. And if you know what the tension should be, then you know how to set it later on. All right, it is time for our first data run. All right, now it's time for the teardown because we wanna see what's inside this machine. Again, we're doing the Juki HZL27Z. What do we have inside? We got glue that holds on. You look inside here, there's a daub of glue and that glue is holding on the knife for your thread cutter right here. In order to get a hold of the and change the needle bar height, you can you can get access through some holes in there, either in the bottom or the top. So I'm bringing this needle up. If you see in this hole, that bottom hole is in the center of your screen right now. That is where you adjust your needle height, your needle bar height. And then if it goes all the way down, you can follow it down. And there's another hole in the bottom. The other adjustment I can find right away is right here. So this is going to be your needle bar left to right. So that's what, uh, when your needle moves left and right, that's how you're going to adjust that. Let's see if we can see right over here where in behind there, right in there is where that adjusts on this bar. This is the bar that moves left to right. So if I go into zigzag mode, And you can see it moving left to right and where that bar connects, that's that adjustment. Your needle front to back is going to be up here on top. So you've got a screw right here. You got a retaining nut on the other side. That will just make sure that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah, that screw, so that'll move there to move that needle front to back on your needle plate. So if you look at your front to back, what I'm talking about here on your needle plate, if your needle front to back means there, front to back, front to back. So your needle needs to be centered side to side. I just showed you that one earlier. And then the one I just showed you now is front to back. That's how to make sure that needle's in the correct spot. You've also got a presser foot adjustment here. You can adjust the height of your presser foot with that. Just keep in mind it's spring loaded. So whenever you do that adjustment, you gotta watch for that. So one thing I like about this machine is that you take off this one cover and you have a lot of adjustments that you have access to on the front of this machine. So that makes it uh, good to be able to do maintenance on this machine. They were thinking about me being able to do maintenance or even the home user uh, being able to do maintenance and maintain their machine. There's a lot of stuff you can clean in here too. You have access to the entire needle bar, which is not something that you typically see in a sewing machine. Typically that needle bar you have access to the front or to the side. Something else I'm noticing here is this metal. So we have a metal frame on this one, which I kind of figured out already based on the weight of the machine. But 
that metal frame means it's a very rigid machine and your your adjustments are not going to be off because of twisting of plastic pieces which a lot of machines are plastic so for you know around the two hundred dollar range at least right now that's a that's a good thing to have that metal frame in there a lot of machines in that price point now are plastic so that's not bad um, so far what I like about the machine is that metal frame I like how it sews I like how it goes through some thick material uh, I don't like how slow it is for um, once you get your skills up as a home gamer this is going to limit you on how fast you can um, sew projects Okay, so I just unlatched. If you look at this, you can see this uh, bar goes all the way through. This is also an issue on Brother machines is that that bar, so that releases your tension when the presser bar, presser foot is raised. That's a very important piece. And if you miss that on reassembly, then your machine's not gonna work right for you because when you raise your presser foot, you're still gonna have tension on there or you'll never have tension, one of the two. So that's something you gotta watch for when you're pulling apart machines. And are we in? Are we in? Okay, we're in. So your tension assembly is right here. Uh, this is the front of the machine. Okay. Tension assembly right there. This bar, like I said, that's what is going to release your tension. probably does that but it releases your tension when the presser foot is raised over here is your adjustment for your tension uh, hardly have ever had to do that and if you ever think you need to do this take a look at your thread first because if you bought some cheap Amazon thread that has um, it's gummy I've had some before that was gummy and the thread itself cause its own tension just going around metal, the metal parts and that thread was junk and spent many hours troubleshooting a machine that I shouldn't have. All right, this has a an LED that's just that's kind of weird because it's just kind of forced in the little area right there it's kind of odd did notice so different from some other machines I've been in the rear cover is not screwed in anywhere to the frame we do have a nice frame I'm gonna call this Zamac this is the um, pop metal whatever you want to call it it's the cheapest metal you can get 
but it is metal and it is sturdy and it is a strong frame. So this is good that we have a strong frame in the sewing machine. Looking at the sewing machine motor, this is a 120 volt, 50 or 60 Hertz motor. It's a 50 watt motor. How many Watts were we running at? Yeah, we'll see a little bit later on. 0.46 amps and 5,000 RPM. Something tells me that 0.46 amps would be a continuous running current, but um, we'll see how we compare to that 0.46 amps and see how long this motor is going to last while we use it. Here's the end of the motor. There's that fan we were talking about, which helps to cool that motor. You got a rubber belt, you got going to a plastic gear. Then when you look inside your machine, you can see that shaft. Let's see if I can focus, focus on the shaft. Yep, that shaft and then right over here, you see that plastic gear going down and then there's a belt going down here to this lower gear, which is metal. And then that goes to the shaft, which is going over here to my hook assembly. And then if you can see it inside here, let's see if I can show it. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to see it. Oh, I see it. Yep. In there. Right over there is that plastic gear going to the hook. But the hook itself, that gear, is metal. You can see that gear right up in there. It's a metal gear going to your hook. And then we're going back up to the upper shaft. Back up here to the upper shaft. Following, there's the worm gear that goes to the, that's a metal gear that's going to plastic cam stack to do your stitches. Then we have metal, and then we have a metal linkage going to my needle, which is underneath here, my needle bar, which goes there. Causes the needle to go up and down. So there's a lot of metal in here. I like it. A couple of plastic gears. I don't think we're ever going to get away from that. We want to see how hard the shaft is because the shaft has four bushings. One, two, three, I lift them up. And then four here on the end. I've done some research on these bushings that they use on these machines. These are porous metal and from the look of them I believe that they're iron bushings, possibly aluminum, but they're porous metal so that there's oil that's impregnated in these um, bushings and they are they are called bearings. I just for some reason when I think bearing I think ball bearing I think something that uh, rotates and these bushings stay still there's no moving parts so I like to call them bushings. That's just me. You can call them what you want. So there is, there is oil in the bushing. Uh, what the problem is, is that that oil, well, I guess it's not really a problem. The way it's supposed to operate is that the oil, as it heats up, it moves to the outside and it cools down inside that bushing and then precipitates back to the hot part and it continues a cycle inside there so you don't lose the oil. Now over time the oil is going to uh, go away. It's going to either come out or it's going to kind of evaporate away and you got to replenish it. And that's what sewing machine manufacturers don't make any provisions for. So this machine was not made to be taken apart. It was not made to be uh, re-oiled at home. This was made to be used until it's done and thrown away. These are all made to be disposable. 
So that's every machine that you have nowadays. You can take this to a machine, uh, to a sewing machine repair guy. We can oil it for you every so often, once a year or so, and clean it out. Or you can do this on your own. You know, you put a few drops of oil on the front and back of that bearing, and then put a few actually on it, uh, and then it'll soak in. Uh, even though you don't see it soak in right away, it will over time, because the pores are very, very tiny. You can't, it just looks like a metal bearing or bushing. I said all that to say that some manufacturers are using subpar products, uh, like the metal for the shaft should be harder than that bushing. And some manufacturers have a very soft um, shaft material and that causes the shaft to wear away and then eventually weld itself to that bushing. And we run into the problems that I solved on one of my other videos. What I have now is a way to test some of that. This is a Rockwell hardness test kit. And I'm going to try and see how hard the shaft's material is. Because this is probably a chrome plated metallic shaft. Is what I think this is. And so when you do this, I made a mark. So this is the lowest Rockwell that I have. This is a 40. So this is a softer metal than 40 Rockwell. We can go ahead and try the top one too. And when you have the soft material, like I said, it ends up over time destroying those bearings that they call them or bushings. And you end up with a machine that doesn't work. So both of these are less than 40, which is okay. Uh, but they do look like it's chrome plated or at least uh, shiny metal metal type, maybe stainless steel. I'm not sure, uh, but it's less than a Rockwell hardness of 40. We can check a few other things, see if anything is stronger than 40. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Uh, I'm not going to do the need. Oh, let's see, where can we get that? We'll get it right down here towards the end. Yeah, I believe that's skating off of there. So our needle bar is a little bit harder. All right, so that's 55. So the needle bar is between 50 and 55. So that's actually a pretty hard component. Let's classify our machine. So we said it is a rotating hook. The feed dogs, they're mechanically operated. The hook is also mechanically operated. We have a an analog control, so the analog control, your foot pedal, all that that does is control uh, your voltage going to your motor. So it's going to lower that voltage and lower the speed of this motor as, and then raise it up as you push down on that pedal. So 0.46 amps, that's not very strong for a motor in a sewing machine. You do have a bunch of plastic gears. Again, you're not gonna get away from that on a, on a machine. <clears throat> But there is a lot of metal in here. You have a metal case, which is awesome. That's a step up on a lot of house machines or home, home gamer machines is that metal case. You've got metal, a lot of metal between the motor and the hook and the motor and the needle. So this machine is made to handle some torque. We're gonna test that here soon. We're going to see how much 
we can put through this machine and it still operate. We're gonna see how close we are to that rating of 0.46 amps on this motor. All right, I wanna look at the timing right now. This is how our timing is set from the factory. See that needle's coming down, then it comes back up. Needle comes down. And comes back up. And then that hook goes right behind that needle. That's what you want to see. You want to see when it comes back up where it's catching that hook. And then you want to see behind it. You want to look at the clearance. And you want it to be just ever so close. Yeah, that, that hook is right there. Right there, see how that hook just barely slides behind that needle? Thanks for watching this video, this teardown of the Juki sewing machine. We learned a lot today about this sewing machine, and we're gonna learn a lot more next week when we do some operational tests. And we're gonna go through three different types of materials. So we're gonna go through cotton and some denim and some leather to see how the machine reacts. And we're gonna be looking at kilowatts, amps, power factor, all kinds of electrical engineering for this sewing machine. And I'm excited because I love this kind of stuff, and I hope you will learn something next week as we go through that. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment, let me know. I read all the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you wanna see in another video. I've got tons of ideas and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you would like to see as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Wes, the sewing machine repair guy. We'll see you next time.